We're going good here. Are you in the office? Alrighty, so today's the day, huh? I, I am, I, you know, it does get my heart pumped whenever I get accounts like this because you know that the people are just absolutely waiting until we come and we, we pull that tooth out, you know? They just, you know, they, 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 they could have called us long before now, knowing this day is coming and just voluntarily giving up the vehicle and avoided all this, but they, they, want, they want to make a show. They want to make a stand, so it's, you know, I'm glad this is going to go down, but um, I'm, I'm coming over the point of the mountain right now, so what I'll do is I'll just jump off at 106 real quick and... Um, I'm actually heading to a doctor's appointment with my wife. Uh, she, she's supposed to from surgery last week, and so we got to go in and have the doctors take a look at her. Uh, uh, so yeah, she's dealing with the uh, cancer. Um, that's pretty much what it'll be. That's why I was calling you. I didn't think I was rude not just hanging out and talking. I'll, I'll come in the door pretty quick quick and grab it and be right, right back out of there and then what I'll do is uh, later this afternoon I've already got it scheduled with the sheriff's department and uh, a buddy of mine that's a constable, he's going to go out with me and I'll, I'll take care of covering his constable fee if there is one um, so and that'll just be all inclusive in, in my repo fee uh, wh where would you like the uh, EV eater taken to? Hey, okay, the one down in Orm? okay, you bet, we will get it down there all right, I'll let you know later on today once that's been handled, uh, but I'll see you in just about uh, 10 minutes. Uh -huh, bye. So yeah, the day of reckoning has come, and come for that AV. Or finally, I've had a whole uh, slither of comments on YouTube, people asking what's happened with that account that day that I walked up and those two girls were going off on me on that porch telling me to F off and come back when you've got the sheriff's department and you, know, you have no legal right blah, 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 and lying to me about it being in the garage. So, we uh, turned that information over to the finance company, and they did the, followed the procedures, uh, they had their first court date, uh, the people, as far as I know, did not show up, they got the default judgment, and then they applied for the rate of execution, and we are now going to jump off the freeway up here at the uh, finance company's office real quick, it's on the way to an appointment for Shanda's uh, post-op with Dr. Griffin. And we're going to uh, grab the writ from her, and then uh, I've got it all set up for later this afternoon after I'm back with and done with appointments with Shanda. We've got another one after this down south in Utah County that we've got to go uh, do. And then once we got that all handled, I've got her home, got her settled, and taken care of. What we're going to do is switch over to the truck, and we're going to come back up here and go to that address and uh, bring the uh, law enforcement along with us. And if for whatever reason, the people have moved the vehicle from that garage and they are to let us know where it is at located and if they know then they are in uh, contempt of a judge's order and can go to jail you know it's that's what what this process is it's unfortunate that it has to come to this stage but uh, there are people like this that want to just they just the squatters they sit and they wait and they make you do everything you possibly have to do to get the vehicle even though they're not driving it they know that, that you know, they claim that there's damage to the transmission and they're not even driving it. It's not even a, a viable piece of equipment for them right now, yet uh, they just make you jump through every last possible loop you have to. And so we do our jobs, and that's what's going to happen today. And, uh, get that thing picked up. Hopefully everything goes clean and smooth. There's no drama, no height. They just open the garage up and get the vehicle pulled out and loaded up. It is all-wheel drive, so I get to throw the dollies on it got a pre-approved transport location that we're taking it to. Go from there and see how that, that goes. Okay, cool. Cool, thank you. So, bring the vehicle here? Yeah, bring it here. Okay. I'll let her, he's okay if I have a, a week or two here. Awesome. Thank yeah. you.
that out. Pull the staple out. Uh, Pull that staple out. Bruising right there. I don't. I never saw that bruising before. So that's your. You're gonna pull that drain tube out right now. It's infected. That's probably your most painful spot, wouldn't you say, right now? Uh, yeah. You can see the bruises on the back of your arms. And when's your home health nurse coming back in? Back. Oh, I, I would think that they would come back. Wait. She didn't say when. I don't Sorry, think she, she did. Just the initial time. Her and another gentleman came together. I think she had to get something approved first. Okay, do not hate me. Just remember, I did not put this on you. Yeah, no, I don't want to put that last one on her. You like my little taping job? I can hate you. Yep, you can yep. hate me. As she pulls it off, think of all the things you want to okay, put in my hand. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> oh, Just think about those stilettos and that black dress I'm going to buy after you're all done with the cancer crap. Uh, uh. And I hate to tell you that that was that was a lot nicer than that. <laughs> the back isn't out when you're not flat. I'm gonna let me take this one staple out, and then I'll pick you up a little bit, okay? Oh, I think I'm okay right on my back. I love how those pinch and bend at the same time. No matter what. I actually had one of those staple removing tools when I had my I folded my leg in half. Had a tip fib combo fracture, and they put staples in my knee, and I had one of those and pulled my own staples out. I... Yeah, we've had men actually try to pull them out with just pliers. And you know, those, no, that tool is phenomenal the way it works. It definitely does 90% of the work for you. Okay, hon, a few minutes and he'll be in, okay? We'll pull that out. Thank you. Okay, okay. That is going to be cool to get on video. It's not entertaining for me, but it's informational. Mm -hmm. Alright, so they've got this app called Follow My Health that they use here in Utah. I don't, I'm sure they use it other places in the country as well, but they had to sign up for it at one of Shanda's doctor's appointments. I got that on video. I'm just logged into it right now on my tablet. I'm reading about her surgeries that she just had and uh, reading the pathology report. They call it a gross examination. And they've got a description of the tumor itself. They cut it open, what they saw, how far it went into the muscle wall, the lymph node packs that they pulled out. It's pretty cool stuff. You can come in here now and after surgery, you can see word for word what the uh, pathology report says. This is great use of technology right here, having access to all of your medical records. Enter. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're glad to see you, Doc. How are you? Good. Lying down. About how many inches in there is it? Yeah, half a foot. Now, where does it, where does it like terminate to? Where does it go to? Is it just it laying just in dives her? down into her pelvis, kind of in the area that hooks up. Okay, so you do kind of aim it towards the resection. Okay. okay. That's what it's for, is to keep are you going to want to stand over on this side or are you both going to be on that side? I'll be over here. Okay. So this is just the stitch part. Good. All done. All done. Okay. A little hole will close in in the line next 24, 48 hours so you can keep a little band aid on that. Okay. Alright, got all done with uh, Shanda's doctor's appointments. Got her home and resting. And my mom is sitting with her now, taking care of her. She pretty much needs to have 24 7 monitoring because of the medication that she's on. A lot of the stuff that she's taking makes her not there so you gotta keep an eye on her constantly and 
can't leave her in the care of, you know, the kids. So pretty much always got to be an adult with her. And I, uh, I have some home hospice care, some nurses that come by twice a week to help with the medical stuff, related stuff, and I'm pretty much doing everything else, but I've got the help of family to allow me to be able to get out and get what work I can done during the day. And then we've got our route of execution, which is the same as a route of replevin. They've got different names for them. Route of execution with a route of assist is pretty much the same as a route of uh, replevin. Basically allows us to be able to go out and uh, with the use of either a constable or the local sheriff's department or even just local law enforcement in that city. Uh, we can call them to come out and assist us in enforcing this. Uh, it allows us to basically open the garage without their permission. We don't need their, their act. You know, we can just open, we open it with force. You know, we try to do as minimal damage as we can. And when they see that, we're pretty much going to probably uh, rip the door off the hinges. Most people just open the garage for us. When they see that uh, we have law enforcement out there with us and have the legal right to do it, but the uh, courts do ask us to try to do it with as little damage as possible. Uh, and there are different ways to pop open garage doors without damaging them. But uh, anyhow, you know, we're not out there to be making friends with these people or anything. We're, we're doing a job and they're making it as difficult as possible. And so we do what's necessary to get the job done. And uh, maybe execute this one after rush hour. It's four. 50 right now. Rush hour is pretty much intact right now, and we'll go until almost about uh, 637. Plus, we want to allow enough time for him to get home. Based on what we know about this account, we know he, the, the debtor himself, does not get home until after 6 each evening. So, I want to time this one so that he's there. It's not going to do any good if she's there because she's not alone. She's not part of this, and I can't serve her. And so, uh, kind of need him to be there to do this the right way. I mean, I guess the debtor technically doesn't have to be there for us to still do our job, but we like to have them present when we serve the Brit. Um, so, I called a buddy of mine who's a constable. He has not returned my call. I'm not sure if he's out of town or what's going on with him. So, my plan at this point, if I have not heard from him by the time I get up there, is to just call the local Sandy police and have them send an officer out, show him the writ, explain what we're doing, and then uh, go from there. All right, so we are finally back up here on this uh, aviator repossession. Hopefully for the final time, we've got our paperwork, fruit of execution, to uh, serve on the uh, debtor. And we're just getting ready to uh, pull up on the address here. We're going to make a quick phone call to the sheriff's department. How you doing? Good. I noticed that the mattress is out front. Did you, someone just move in here? What's that? Did someone just move in here? No. Oh, okay. Is uh, this still the residence? Yeah. Are you looking for that car? Yeah. What's the deal on it? Well, we've got a writ of execution to pick it up tonight. We were going to call the sheriff's department and have them come out and help us get the garage open. But do uh, you know what this, what, what's the deal? Okay. Uh, if you want to just, I mean, we don't have to call the sheriff's department out or if you want to just well, give it to us. The thing is, is that they sued me for it. Well, yeah, that's what they have to do before they, that's the beginning of the process. Is, so, how does that work? If they sue me for it, they'll, li they'll how liquidate, they take the car? They'll liquidate the asset, put whatever money they get towards the sale, towards the suit, and then whatever the remaining balance is, they, they work that out with you. Some people will roll that don't up into 30 days for that, though? I don't know. My job is just to pick up the vehicle. They, they got, gave us a route of execution. Can I ask you a report? Yeah, I can actually give you a business card uh, if you want just one. Just my buddy, he owns a re reliable, uh, reliable recovery solutions. Oh, okay. Oh, what's his name? Jay Green. Yeah, I know Jay. Yeah, one of my yeah. best friends. That's my company. He knows who I am. Uh, but So you want to do it without the sheriff here, or do you want to do it with him here? It's your choice. I just need to find out some more of what's going on. Well, I can give you, we can, well, you'll get a copy of the paperwork that we're going to serve on you here tonight. Got it, we're fine. No, this is different paperwork. This is this is paperwork for the sheriff to. If we have the paperwork. No, this is different paperwork. This, this is called, yeah, this is called a, this, this is called a, uh, this is called a writ of execution. It's a, it's different paperwork. This allows us to come out with the sheriff's department and actually by force take the vehicle. 
it's signed by a judge and stuff. But I like I said, I like to always you know deal with people right. in a proper way. I'm and not stuff. I'm and not nasty to deal with. I, I'll talk to you. Okay, and that's I why just, I, just, I just I just like to know my options. You know what I mean? I don't. No, no I got you. I worked my ass off for this car. I got you. I did not call you white oh, yes, trash. You did. I, I did not call you yes, white you did. trash. Yes, you did. I did not. Sometimes I get worked up, yeah. as you can imagine in this job. You were a little mad when I said the truck was at the Ford dealership, which it was. <laughs> Anyhow, so how, how do you guys want to do this? My job is just to pick the vehicle up tonight and deliver it to them. Well, and if you want, if you want to, we can roll it out. I can hook it up and I can get out of here and fast as we can be done with it. Yeah, this is actually your guys' copy right here. I just, I just want to look and see what my options are. You know, I've had the money to pay that. Yeah, once they hand over a writ to us, our job is just to go out and pick up the vehicle. So. I'm not trying to make your job. Well, oh, good. So how do we want to do this? <laughs> Faster the better for me because i got a lot of stuff i got to do tonight. I just want to make some phone calls first. Okay. And see what my options are. Okay. So who are you going to call for those options? So that I, Your brother-in-law? Okay. Tell him we're out here pick up the vehicle and then he'll tell you something and then you'll make a decision based on that or what are you thinking? I'm just kind of trying to get my head wrapped around what you're hoping to accomplish with the phone conversation with him and stuff. Just so I know how long I'm going to be here. Well, I just want to understand what my options are. I don't... What are they actually reaching us to talk about? Again, I, I'm, I'm the company that no, no, just, serves the paperwork and moves it. They, don't, they didn't tell you why. We don't, well, we, we, we don't, there's no reason for us to get into the... They tell us that it's because your loan is in delinquency, so that could be for a number of reasons. There's, there's like eight different possible causes. It could be because of lack of payment. It could be because of lack of insurance. It could be for because you moved and didn't tell them where you moved. There's different clauses in your contract when you signed it, and then at the, after all those clauses, there's a clause that says, if you break any of said clauses your loans are default and then we have options a b c d and e and then those options one of them is to recover the vehicle so all we need for them is to prove to us that you're in default of a contract and that's all we need in the state of utah to do what's called a self-help repossession but as far as you know we don't need to we don't need to get into your personal finances with them i don't need to know why i don't need to know if it's because of your payments or because of what uh, unless it's pertinent to the to the actual repossession but the less we know about it the better it is because then you know they're not getting private information does but we don't need. What we need is an address, a description of a vehicle, and transport it. Instructions. That way I'm not involved in your, you know, your financial matters. Any more than I need to be. Give me an hour. Sorry. I, I really don't have an hour. I, I, I can give you like 10, 15 minutes to figure out whatever you want to figure out. Then after that, I'm going to just get a sheriff out here and just get him to open the garage. I, that's my, I, I've got a, I got a, I got a long night ahead of me, and i got to get a bunch of stuff done. So I just some this is the first thing I've got to do tonight. Night hour is going to kill me in time, so I, I, you know, I'll give you 10, 15 minutes to figure out what you want to do, and then the, I'll get a, I'll get a patrolman out here to, to read the paperwork we have and execute the, the, the writ. So I'll let you talk with your wife real quick and figure out what you want to do. I'll just pull up the street here just for a second, and we'll wait, see what you want to do. Talk about it, talk about it, talk about it, talk about it. So we're gonna get a we're gonna get a cop coming this way. Once again, if you are reporting an emergency, police and fire dispatch. And where are you waiting now? I'm uh, one address over from the house. I've actually already made contact with them. They're out in front of the house, and I've spoken with them, asked them if they wanted to do this without law enforcement involved and they're being reluctant still so uh, i just pull i just told them i was just going to pull over one street down one house down and call you guys so they're aware that what we're doing so what kind of vehicle are you waiting in a uh, black ford f-250 with a shell on the back and are you north or south of that address just one house north of it Alright, we'll get somebody out there as soon as possible. Just call tonight if anything changes before they get there. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Bye bye. Yeah, it's gonna take them a minute to dispatch someone anyways. And so I him and this woman are talking. I got a feeling that I could be, you know, unless I see him move that truck out of the way. 
he's pretty much already confirmed that it is here and in the garage, which is good. Looks like we got some kids out playing in front and stuff, so hopefully as soon as they see the patrol car pull up and we show the officer the uh, paperwork, the officer will enforce the uh, writ and then uh, they'll open the garage and uh, hand over the vehicle. The guys, you know, I understand he wants to talk and ask me about his options and stuff, but they've got a pop copy of the paperwork now, they've been served. keep talking and we're past the talking point so doing what I can to stay cool about it just do my job alright there's our officer hello how you doing good how are you good hey we've got a writ of execution here we've got a vehicle walking in the garage it's uh, been signed by a judge allowing us to have you guys come out and enforce this writ to pick up the uh, 2003 AD that is locked in the garage and just pay for it authorizing us to do you mind if I take a look at sure, it? Sure, you bet. They've got your copy yet. We've already served them with one copy. Okay. And explain to them what we're doing. Who are these people? Right here. That's the dead right there. That's his name. Okay. And we've talked to them already and served them. We have to serve them and let them know what we're here for. And we asked them if they'll be, you know, voluntarily allowing them access to it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 So I'm actually going to have to probably get permission from my sergeant to do it. That's fine. Because it's usually sheriff or constable. So yeah, that's it, fine. Know? And if you guys want to send okay. a, a, a Solomon County Sheriff out here, mm -hmm. they're more familiar with me. I, right. I told dispatch that. I said, it's a, you know, local Sandy, Sandy, but I said it'd be preferable if we have a sheriff. Right. So. Let me call her real quick. Okay. Okay. Thought I'd double check. Thanks. Okay. said, nope, it has to be a constable or a sheriff. You, you guys dispatch, because I already called dispatch, and uh -huh. you, and you guys call dispatch back and ask them what you need to do. Let me give you um, the sheriff's, the UPD's phone number. Okay. It's 801. Yeah, so I think we just type it in as we're talking here. Okay. You can tell them that you called us out. No, I, I, I told the dispatch not to send yeah. locals to Sandy, but when I saw you pull them, I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll call them and have them send their yeah, out. And just let them know that they've already sent Sandy out and that we can't help you. Okay. Sorry about no, that. No, no, you're fine. That's what I expected. Yeah, I hate when they send out the <laughs> local PD. We need a sheriff's officer. Uh, we are out here serving a writ of execution on a vehicle that is locked in a garage and we've got a signed writ here from a judge to use uh, the sheriff's department to basically seize this property and uh, we called dispatch and asked them to send out a sheriff and they sent us a Sandy police officer instead and uh, they, they, they can't send a city police Sandy City was just here and said that we need to call the sheriff because it clearly states in the judge's order that it needs to be sheriff. Uh, I am a constable, yes, but I, I need a, I need an actual officer out here to, to enforce this. Okay, I'm just telling you that the city was just out here and they denied helping us and said that we need to call the county. And I explained we're in the city and they said, well, it's got to either be, you know, sworn constable or county sheriff uh, with Utah County uh, or okay it's 801 so a black truck just pulled out of the driveway took off down the street it's been a minute he's going somewhere to do something who knows what I sure hope the aviator doesn't pull out of the garage and take off because that's a real bummer. We're gonna have to follow it. I'll just stay on the phone with it. This is gonna become a mess. Oh, things are just never easy.
told the dispatcher to send a sheriff's officer out, not a local PD. And they said, not a local PD. Alright, here comes our sheriff deputy, finally. She's out front holding the paperwork, been talking to her neighbors. Alrighty, sir. Two of you. It's the next ha next house down. Okay. We've got a writ of execution to pick up a 2003 Lincoln Aviator that's in the garage. They refused to open the door, so we took them to. Had the plans come take court, and they got a writ of execution. And it says here on this paragraph, James Constable or Sheriff. Or are you with the Constable's office or are you with the company? Both. I, I'm actually the one that served them. I'm not. With, I'm with the company called Certified Asset Recovery Services. We also do process. You don't work for the constable's office. We can't do this. Pretty much. Okay. If you work for a repo company, we can't touch it. Can't get the middle. Okay. Especially well, two, said, two, big reasons, sheriff, two big reasons. Two big reasons. One of them is the same in our area. Well, I know that's they, they sent a Sandy out for that. The constable wants that to come out. No longer the sheriff's office. Because all because you became unified police department. Is there even a sheriff's department out there? Yeah, they just come with a. The jail, um, safety services, but, stuff but like that. not none of the patrol stuff. No. Yeah. So I don't know how that works with those rules. For that. Yeah. Yeah. Not sure what's going on. Okay. But, so you guys won't even talk to him or nothing. Huh? We, we wouldn't anyway. Even if it, even if it was, it would be all the same as we please. I wish one of our civil guys was out there. They'd know a hell of a lot more about this. Do you have a number for one of them that you can talk to? All the guys I didn't care what I do on the Utah County. I don't know anybody here, so I'm like, yeah. most guys, for the most part, we usually have one or two, a couple nights a week out, but yeah. she checks, she checks all of our radios, there's one there. Yeah, down in, like, Orem, they just come out with us, and we're responsible, and we're just involved with the parking lot. Yeah, generally, if the constable is the constable, but, like I said, even, I mean, I think even under those circumstances, even down there, I think all they do is do the piece. Yeah. We don't have a problem here at all. Okay. Well, they, they have been served the... I, I served the law, so there's certain things we can and we can't serve, like yeah. I can't serve divorces and things like that, and uh, 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 warrants and stuff, but I can, we can do uh, assists, we can do uh, summons, all the, all the stuff that basically gets them into court and stuff, so it's just a car. Yeah, it's an O3 meter system in the garage. And we, I pulled up and asked if they wanted to do it without you guys here first time, but we basically tried to come up. He goes, the piece of paper doesn't just squat to me. He goes, no, no. He wants someone to tell him, you know, open the garage and you'll go to the chin. He needs to be the key body, so this has been going on for months and months and months. Now we have to get this frustrated. All right, I am so. I'm going to get more frustrated when you guys' processes have changed and you still can't do anything about it. Even with lawsuits, you know, you get a signed judge's order and it doesn't do us any good. Um, he said you'll have to call our civil division here during the hours tomorrow and they'll come out and serve that here. You guys should uh, give me a number for that? And ask for the civil division? Okay, I'll do it. Back back I'll do it. Back Sergeant, Sergeant is uh, Sergeant Rogers. Okay. 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 All right. We'll come back out. No problem helping me out at all. They just, it's got to be done the right way. No, no, I understand. I, I, and again, I, since Unified became, I haven't done one of these in almost three years, and so last time I did one of these, there were actual sheriff's officers that came out. Just they just knocked on my door and said, open your garage. You know, we did it that way we did it back in the day. So. Well, that's what yep. I'll do tomorrow. Yep, that I know. So, it's changed, it's changed. Thanks a lot for, for coming out. Did your hubby take off? Is he going to be coming back, or is he gone for the night? Okay. They uh. He's upset. He don't want. I, I, he don't want to get into conflict and like. No, that's that's fine, and that's probably a smart thing to do. I know. I, I like to remove myself from situations if it's hard to the call. The, the the way their process has changed because when the sheriff's department went away, and they became unified police department, they have a special civil division that handles this kind of stuff now between nine to five hours. And so what we they want us to do is they want us to call them in the morning. They give me the name of the sheriff or the sergeant that handles this kind of stuff now. So we'll give them a call tomorrow morning, and so we'll just, I'll just, I'll just let, give you the, the, the 
courtesy to let you know what our process will be. We'll come back out here tomorrow. Because I have a lot of stuff to move to. No. Like the car sideways. No. Like you would never get a job. That's, that's yeah. good. But I just so you guys are prepared for what. It, it, we'll, we'll come out tomorrow with the, with their, somewhere from their civil division. Um, do you have a preferred time? Because I'd really like to really be able to do this on your guys' schedule to make it as easy as possible. He'll be at work, so I'm here all day with kids, so. Okay. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter to you? Okay. It'll probably sound right around 10, 11 in the morning, and if. That's if they could do that, it, it'll, it'll be when they tell me they can meet me here, but I'll come back out tomorrow and we'll deal with it then. Okay, Alright, we'll see you later. Yeah. Last time we did one of these up here in this area, those guys that came out just now were sheriff's guys, now they're county PD. That was what it's called. It's a unified police agency. It's, there was a big tax issue about it for a while and whether they were going to do it or not do it and they incorporated a whole bunch of small police departments into one big large force that covers the outlying areas and stuff and it's it kind of sucks because in the process some of the procedures changed and one of them is serving writs I guess they have a civil division now and told us to call during business hours and they don't do this stuff after hours anymore they do it during the daylight nine to five so, and I went back up and talked to her and told her we'll, we'll be back out and let her know what's happening so she can let him know. I guess he, he was getting pretty hot under the collar and decided just to take off and get get away from all this because he was, she said he was getting to the point where he was getting pretty pissed off and her eyes were, I can tell she's been crying. You know, she knows this is the, pretty much the end of it and they're going to lose the vehicle. And so, <sighs> but nothing we can do about it tonight. These guys can't get involved, won't get involved. Local law enforcement, you know, won't get involved. And, you know, we've got to sign judge's order. It's we got we have to follow the precinct, the district that we're in, procedures, and their, their procedure is to call this civil division tomorrow and do it that way. So that will be the way we do it. Back up here again tomorrow. I'll finish my report. What happened tonight? What so the finance company is aware of what's happening, and we'll get the rest of this segment tomorrow. All right, so it is now the uh, following morning, about uh, 10 a.m., and I've uh, called the Salt Lake County dispatch back, and I asked for their civil service department, and they uh, transferred me over to uh, Sergeant Rogers uh, right away. Had no problem getting hold of him once I had a name and a division to ask for. I told him what we were trying to do. And uh, he said, they let you guys serve these in the past. And I'm like, yeah, we've had no problem in the past. We, you know, show up with a constable or a, a sheriff's county deputy and knock on the door. And uh, I said, I tried that yesterday. And, and you know, if I, the first they sent Sandy PD out, and that wasn't what we asked for. And then they sent Unified PD out, which is the equivalent of what used to be the sheriff's department up there in Salt Lake County. And that didn't work. And I, you know, he kind of laughed because he knew he could see what was going on. I said, you know, three years ago when I served one of these, uh, a sheriff showed up, you know, in the sheriff's vehicle. It says Salt Lake County Sheriff on the doors. And I said, I know you guys just deal with the I, the jails now and uh, stuff like that, but don't do any of the patrol stuff anymore. And uh, he said, yeah. He says, here's my address. And he gave me my the address. I know where that's at. It's, there's a big, huge church. It's where the jail's at, in the main jail, in, off 3300 South and 9th West there. And... Uh, so he said, come on down and tell me where they're at in the building. He said, come down anytime and we'll go out there together and get this handled. So I'm going to get ready and then we're going to head that way. Got to run over to the pharmacy here real quick at Macy's and uh, grab Shanda's new pain medication prescriptions. We uh, finally got her approved for Medicaid, it's, uh, government assistance for medical to help pay for her cancer and stuff and I tell you what it's almost worse being approved for that because I mean they, they cover a lot of things but once you're under the thumb of the government's uh, you know approval for everything it makes things very difficult just this morning I you know got a call from the pharmacies they're saying that you know they turned in a script for her these extended release or these uh, instant release morphines and she's already had so many of the extended release morphines prescribed to her in the last 30 days and Medicaid is denying filling this whole script because you're only allowed a total of 180 
180 or 150 in, in a 30 day period of any kind of morphine, doesn't matter whether it's extended release or instant release or whatever. And the, the pharmacist is like, this is stupid. He goes, they're, they're two totally different acting drugs. The way they, they work, what they're for, you know, this is for stage four colon cancer. And they just, they don't understand when they, you know, these people that work in these bureaucratic positions, they that write these rules and regulations don't understand medications. And they see the word morphine and they say, okay, we don't think anybody should have more than this many, you know, because of, for whatever reason, you know, whether it be because the DEA dictates it because of drug abuse or because of them being sued over uh, someone having an overdose or who knows what the reason in the past was that caused this to come about. But at one time, I know there was probably not this mandate and it just makes it so much more difficult to get well, our prescriptions, you know, whereas I could just, you know, anyway, so what I've done is I've, I said, what's the cash price if we don't go through this Medicaid insurance and have them pay for the pills? And they gave me the cash price and, and, and I, I weighed the options and to get the whole script that she needs, I'm just going to pay for it. And the reason I'm, I'm stating this is because we still have people that, you know, the donations are trickling in. It's, it's maybe 60 to 80 bucks a month that comes in over the PayPal because of the links that I've put onto my YouTube videos, but people are still going on there and donating 20 bucks, 15 bucks, 10 bucks. Someone just barely on the 23rd uh, donated 50 bucks, you know, it just, and I want you guys to know that, you know, for anybody that watches this channel and that clicks on that link and, and does a, a donation for Shanda for the cancer, th this is what it pays for. I, I take this PayPal card and I walk into a place like this and I swipe it. And the only thing that PayPal card is used for is for medical stuff related to Shanda. And that's something I've always wanted to be able to, anybody ever wanted transparency on this and ever wanted to audit me and wanted to see what, what, what her PayPal account is used for, it is 100% used for nothing but medical stuff. Don't use it to put gas in my car, I don't use it for food. There's all kinds of other things I could use it for that people probably would be okay with because they're donating towards you know, the comfort and care of, of her while she's having this to deal with cancer. Now, I could probably use that money for just about anything I'd want to, and I don't think anybody that donated money would really care. But I like to be able to say, and Shanda, especially, she's, this, she's actually the one that mandated this, and I'm just passing that on, that she has absolutely made it clear that she wants to use it 100% for medical-related stuff because of the fact that she has this cancer. And... Uh, once she's beat this cancer, we're going to take those links down and we're not going to ask for any more donations because, you know, once we can say she's cancer free and, and unless the cancer comes back, uh, we won't ask for another dime because, uh, matter of fact, we will take what money we have left over and we'll figure out some kind of a charity or a cancer program to donate that money towards and we won't keep it for ourselves because, you know, we are good people and we do things the right way and I, I would never ask for a dime from another individual based on the health of somebody. I've gotten actually gotten slander before from somebody on Facebook or on, on Facebook, on uh, YouTube for using my wife's cancer as a means to profit. They, they actually thought that that's what I was doing. I was, I was exploiting my wife's cancer to make money and it broke my heart. They think that someone would believe that. I, you know, I wanted to reach out to that person and tell them, look, you, you totally don't understand, but it's pointless trying to talk to trolls. So, yes, donations are greatly appreciated and properly used at this end. We love you guys. You really made a big difference. Like financially, I couldn't have done this. I've, I've drained every last time I can out of my life to keep her alive and it's taken above and beyond from friends, family, and everybody out there on YouTube. Thank you. This uh, Tahoe in front of us, it's got a camera system on it that I've never seen before. I wanted to catch it on video. This is the sheriff's office that we're coming to. Guy. Oh, these are, they're actually cops. That's a camera system on the top right there. That's what he's doing, he's dropping a, dropping another cop off. I've never seen that camera system before. Round cameras. 
Hey, I got a quick question. That Tahoe that just dropped you off, that's yeah. an LPR camera system on top, isn't it? Yes. Do you know what brand it is? I've never seen those round cameras before. Oh, um, no, that's my husband. He works for Embed Motor Vehicle Enforcement. Okay, do you know what camera system they happen? As I used to have a camera system from MV uh, Tracks on one of my spotter vehicles. I'm a, I have I'm, no idea. You don't know? Okay. I call him and find out. I was just curious. I, I, so, so he actually works for Motor, motor Vehicle Enforcement? Yeah. Maybe next time I'm up at their office, up, is, is he on the office off of uh, I-80 up there? Yeah. Maybe next time I'm up there, I'll ask those guys. Uh, we work with them a lot on repos and stuff, but I've never seen the round cameras before, so I was just curious which which system that was. Yeah, it's. I know it's expensive because he makes me park outside when he ha when he brings it home so he can use the garage. Oh, yeah, you want to lock those things inside <laughs> at night. Cool. Yeah, I definitely know it's expensive. Well, thanks for answering my question. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, so he works for Motor Vehicle Enforcement. They're using the camera systems now because uh, here in the state of Utah, it's illegal if you're not law enforcement to run those camera systems. And those guys are probably one of the agencies that pushed for that law to get passed. Sergeant Rogers from the Civil Division. Yeah, I called him. He's worked out a writ of execution. He needs to go serve. And we called him this morning. He told us to come down here to uh, certified asset recovery. He just said south end of the, off of the building. Maybe you could direct me which way, where his office. Well, I don't know where his office is. It's probably not even civil division. It's all the way at the end of the other right hand side. Okay. You'll see it down there. I got wallet. No weapons. There no weapons. Okay. You're good. Okay. Hi, how you doing? Good, how are you? Called the, the, I called and talked to Sergeant Rogers this morning, and he told me to come down here. We've got a uh, writ of execution we need to serve to get a vehicle out of a locked garage in Sandy. Okay. We went out there yesterday and tried to do it, and found out that you can't just go out to the address anymore and call for a sheriff's officer and get it done. We have to, I guess, come here now and do it. Yeah. New, yeah. new process, so we first time doing this. It through this manner. I'm gonna have to write up a whole new procedures for this for my guys. <laughs> and you know, there's fees to serve it. How much? Uh, it's $50 plus mileage. Okay. Hold on just one second. Yeah, you bet. Oh, I can't wait for this one to be over. Sitting here now for almost 15 minutes. This lady's looking stuff up, I'm trying to figure out what the heck to do here. All of this, all of this is what what costs everybody. Me, me sitting here, the man hours I'm putting into this is gets spread across the board through our entire economy simply because of one consenting adult that wants to sign a contract and then not follow through on that legal obligation of that contract and just make everything as difficult as possible for every party down the road, you know, just boom, 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 on down the line, cost everybody. Just amazing. Seeing this process time and again, time and again. Get so used to, you know, Going out and just picking a car up and transporting it, dropping it off, and take for granted how easy self help repossession is until you have to come up against one of these locked in a garage and the person just absolutely refuses to surrender the vehicle and processes change, laws are updated. Yeah, we, we've got a repo truck here. I, I'm the actual recovery agent, so we would absolutely love to be able to do it right now. So that's what you were hoping to do. Pro yes. Usually we do these for a sale. Oh. We get the property and then it goes through a sale. So it's not something. Okay. 
the way we used to do it in the past is we would go out with the writ, we would call a constable, they would meet us there, we would knock on the door, they would open the garage, we'd get the collateral out. And so I've, I've never done it this way before, and no, it's been years since we've done one of these writs. No, that's fine. I, but I found what that's we fine. do is we go out, serve it, we set it for sale. If you want the property picked up and held for sale, then you need to make arrangements with my officer to pick up and store the property at that time. But a writ of execution is for us to sell the property. Okay. So what do I need to get to be able to... All I need is something to... Because obviously they're keeping the vehicle locked in the garage and, not, and we're trying to get judicial process to help us open the garage. So what do I need to be able... Do I need like a writ of assist? What do I need to get a sheriff's officer to be able to go out there, knock on the door and say, you guys need to pop open your garage so that this recovery company can pick this collateral up? A writ of, rest, a writ of uh, assistance or a writ of... Um, Replevin? Uh, Replevin or what's, what's the other one where we're... No, it's like with an R. Yeah, anyway, one of those, right. This is, this is for us to sell the vehicle. So this doesn't, this says it's no good to be able to go out and repossess it from the no. garage. Repossession, that's the word I'm looking for. Repossession. Yeah, you want a writ of repossession, a replevin, or assistance. It okay. orders us to assist you in getting the vehicle. Because this way, this is telling us that you've got a judgment, we're going to sell it to give the money. Correct. That judgment. We thought that this, because they used to call it a writ of execution with a writ of assist, where we would just go out and... and that, us. No, it wasn't. This has been years back when we just could all just this all carrying. All right, we, we will let the finance company know that and then okay. have them file for that in the same court, and then we'll get that. And then once we have that writ of assist, then how do we execute then you bring it? bring it to us, and it's $50 plus buyers, and then we call the officer in, or, or you call, usually you call the next morning okay. to make arrangements that day, uh, for the officer to meet you and, and take care of it. Okay. We don't get to call them in until we do Okay, so we do that over the phone. We just call and tell you we've got a rid of. You can pay us, and then the next, and then we get it assigned to the officer. You can call between eight and nine the next morning and make the arrangements. There. The next day. Uh -huh. Okay. All righty. We'll let the finance company know. To get into the garage. To get into the garage. Uh, yeah, give us something with some keys in it. Okay, we'll make sure that the judge puts that in the order. Okay. Thank you. Paperwork doesn't. According to that lady who says she's been in this 32 years, this writ of execution is not what we need. So I've got to call the finance company now and explain to her what's going on. Okay, all right, so this paperwork that we have is not going to get us that vehicle out of the garage. According to the sheriff's office, they've uh, changed their procedures quite a bit since they've became Unified Police Department, I'm, and uh, we've, it's been hours of me this morning dealing with this, trying to figure this out, but basically, this writ of execution gives the Sheriff's Department the ability to go out to the address and sell the property on site, and, and if they want the property removed from the premises, then there's an extra fee for them to, to have a, a tow company come out transport it to an impound, store it. I'm like, no, 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 I said, we're a repossession company. We just need help getting into the garage so that we can get this thing out of the garage. And so they're, they're saying that we need what's called a writ of assistance, not a writ of execution, a writ of assistance. And in that writ of assistance, it needs to say that the sheriff's department has the right to help us open the garage. And she says it needs to have some some teeth in it, you know, they need to have, have the actual, the judge needs to actually put the verbiage in there that the vehicle's locked in the garage and that we're giving the sheriff's department permission to, to help us get into that locked garage on this writ of assistance. And she said, that, she said, then we take that writ of assistance, we bring it down here to this office, we pay them the fee, and then the following morning we can call them between 8 and 9 o'clock and we can schedule an officer to come out and actually execute that writ of assistance. That's the process at this point. Judge will grant it, but he wouldn't let me do it unless he spoke directly to the sheriff. Gotcha. Um, so, I mean, I don't mind calling the court and giving him a heads up, but I, I do know that, that that's what the judge told me last time, and it's the same judge in the same same court, is that they need to talk to the sheriff directly, or have the sheriff call them directly and let them know what's, that they need that special verbiage in there before the judge will grant that verbiage. Gotcha. Well, what do you want me to do at this point on this on this account? Uh, what, what would you like us to do as a repossession company? Because uh, well, since you're the one who's talked to the sheriff already, I mean, if you don't mind calling the sheriff and and, and I get you, uh, I can grab you the number to the South Jordan 
small claims court and just saying that the, the judge there requests that they call in and explain um, that they need that verbiage because the customer won't turn the property over. Okay. Um, and then and then I will go about getting the rest done, but I need that done before the judge will. Okay, I'll head back in there and talk to this lady that says she's been doing this 32 years, and I'll, I'll, I'll give her that. Why don't you email me or, or text me over that phone number for the that they need to call, and I'll, and, and then I'll walk back in there and give that to her and see if she'll be willing to do that. Okay, so Thanks, bye. Thanks, man. Bye. Hi. Did I leave you enough time to get stuff moved out of the way? Did the vehicle pick up or? The car's gone. Oh, it is? Did they send somebody else to pick it up or? Somebody picked it up. Oh, yeah. We're the only ones that have an order to pick it up. Well, you know who you gave it to? I didn't give it to. It was gone when I got up. Oh, so maybe your husband took it somewhere else. No. My husband didn't. I don't know how he could have. Well, you know. I thought you already came and got it. Uh-uh. And got in my garage. Uh-uh. No, we have, we're the only ones that have an order to pick it up from the finance company, and they don't have it yet. So if it's not here and you don't know where it's at, I would report it stolen. What the hell? You know? Yeah. Yeah, we got it on I Are you would. sure you don't have another driver or something? I'm the only one with my company. Like, nobody else would have come out and picked it up for us. And as far as I know, they I just barely left their office. They asked us to come back over here and get it picked up today. So I know that they don't have it for sure. Your finance company doesn't have it for sure. So if you guys don't know where it's at, I would definitely call and report it stolen. So that's about you guys want to go with it. But well, my job is just to go out and get it picked up. But yeah. If you say it's not here and you don't know where it's at, that's all we can do is tell them that that's what's happened, so. Did you want to, like, try, try calling Josh and see what he says? He can't call him at work. Oh, okay. I can't get a hold of him. Okay. What time will he be home this evening? Maybe we can come out and they could do a report tonight with the sheriffs, and that way they can get, figure out what happened with the who. Uh, who it up. I don't know. He said he's working late at 6 or 7, probably. Okay. All right. We'll come back out then and maybe help you guys get this resolved. Okay. Yeah, so now they've playing the game that the vehicle's not here. They don't... Uh, claim to know where it's at. It's a typical move people do. They go and they have the vehicle over to a friend or family member's house thinking that that's going to keep the sheriff's department from getting their hands on it. But they don't realize it's not going to work, so. We'll report what's happened to the finance company. Let them know that they've moved the vehicle from here. Or at least they're stating that it's not here. I'm guessing it might be leaving the garage cracked open like it is. And they figured that we would look up underneath it and know that it's not here anymore. Act, her, her act is not very good. I'm trying to act like she doesn't have a clue where the vehicle's at is. <laughs> She's blatantly lying to me, but I'm not surprised based on the way this account's gone. It's just funny to stand there and watch people with the looks on their face like, are you, are you believing what I'm saying? <laughs> Anyhow, I love this account. I love this account. We get at least one or two of these a year that just called Nightmare Accounts. You make no money on them as a, as a company. You do everything you can to help the finance company get their collateral picked up and deal with this trash. It's just horrible. Just horrible for everybody.